tonight's performance. I am Jake Anderson, one of the directors of tonight's show. I am Josh Hagel, the other director for tonight. Uh, before we begin, I do have a brief announcement. Um, due to unforeseen circumstances, one of our actors will be unable to attend tonight's performance. So tonight, okay. the role of Hamlet will be played by Joshua Cagle. What? <laughs> wonderful show for you tonight. I hope. Um, let's see. While Josh gets ready, I would like to thank the Blandon Foundation for a generous uh, grant for which we are very grateful and without which this production would have been much more difficult to put on. Uh, in addition, I would like to thank the Grand Rapids Players for being willing to produce a show of Shakespeare here in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. We appreciate the risk and hope not to disappoint. Uh, and with that, the stage is set, actors are as ready as they can be, and I will be proud to present tonight's production of William Shakespeare's Hamlet. Death, the memory <laughs> and though it be fit 
us to bear grief in our hearts, and our whole being to be contracted in a single brow of woe, and so far, <laughs> and so far hath discretion fought with nature, that we with wiser sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometimes sister, and now our queen, the imperial joyness of our current warlike state, hath asked her with defeated joy, with mirth and funeral, and with dirge and marriage, uh, weighing in equal measure with delight and dole, hath taken to wife. Nor have we here imbibed your better wisdoms, with which you have freely, along with this affair, gone. Or all our friends. And now, good Laertes, what's the news with you? Uh, you told us of some suit. What is it? What would you have? Dread, my lord, your leave and favor to return to France. And have you your father's leave? What saith Polius? He hath, my lord, I do beseech you. Give him leave to go. Well, then, take thy fair hour, Laertes, and, <laughs> and thy time is thine, and thy best graces spend as thy will. And, and now <laughs> our, our cousin, Hamlet, our son. A little more than kin, and that's then. Um, that's then. Um, <laughs> kind. <laughs> How is it the clouds still hang on you? Good Hamlet, cast thy magic color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Comment, all the lids must die, passing through nature to eternity. I, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam, nay, it is, I know not, seems. <laughs> Tis sweet and commendable in thy nature, Hamlet, to give mourning duties to your father. But you must know that your father lost his father, and that father lost, lost his and the survivors bound in filial obligation for some term of obsequious sorrow. Uh, but <clears throat> to, to persist in this obstinate condolement, tis in pious stubbornness, tis unmanly grief. We beg you, throw down this unprevailing woe and think of us as a father. For let the world take note, you are most immediate to our throne, and with no less nobility of love than that of a dearest father for his son, we impart to you. For your intent to return to school in Wittenberg is most retrograde to our desire. We beseech you, remain here in the cheer, the comfort of our eye, our, our most uh, immediate courtier, our cousin, our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey. Um, kind. Other pain. <laughs> Madam. <laughs> <laughs> Tis a loving and fair reply. Be as ourselves in Denmark. Madam. Now the die and resolve itself into a new. <laughs> How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seems to me all uses of this world. Fie, art, oh, fie! <laughs> Tis an unweeded garden that grows with seed, things rank and gross in nature, possessing merely that it should come to this but two months dead. So absent a king, so loving to my mother, that he might not fatigue the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Oh, heaven and earth must I remember. But she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And within a month, I must not think on. Frailty, thy name is woman! <laughs> A little month ere her 
her shoes with old, with which she followed my poor father's body, that can I will be all tears. Why is she, Eve? <coughs> Even she, married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. She married, ere yet, with the self the most unrighteous tears left the flushing in her galled eyes, she married. Almost wicked speed to pulse with such dexterity with sexuous sheets. Hail to your lips. <laughs> I am glad to see you well, Horatio, or I'm ready to forget myself. <laughs> um, say, my lord, it, your poor servant never. What is your affair, Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. I pray that you do not mock me, fellow students. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Trip, trip, Horatio. The funeral bank beast did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. My father. Methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. My lord, I think I saw him yesterday. The who? My lord, to keep your father. The king, my father. Cease your admiration for a while with an extent ear. So I may deliver upon the witness of the judgment this marvel to you. For the love of God, let me hear it. <laughs> Two nights together at these judgments, Marcellus and Bernardo on their watch in the dead, vast middle of the night. They thus encounter a figure like your father appears before them. And with solemn Marcellus swan stay by them. Thrice you walk by their oppressed and fierce cries and eyes within destruction blank. Whilst they distilled almost a jelly with the act of fear, stand up and speak not to him. This to me in dreadful secrecy part of it, and I with them the third night kept the watch. Where, as they delivered both in time, form of the same each word make true and good. The apparition come, I knew your father. These hands are not in the light. But where was this? Uh, my lord, on the platform where we watched. Well, did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but answer made it not. Yet, watch me thought, it lifted up its head, and did address itself to motion like, as it would speak, but even then the morning cock grew loud, and at the sound of shrunken haste to wake him, vanished from our sight. Tis very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. And we did take it written down in our duty to let you know of it. Indeed, indeed. But this troubled me. Hope you don't watch tonight. Uh, we do, my lord. I will watch tonight. Perchance to walk again. I warrant it will. And if it assume my noble father's person, I shall speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all that you have hitherto concealed this sight, that it be tenable to meet your silence still. And whatsoever else shall happen tonight, we will give it an understanding, but no time. I will requite you of them, so fare you well. Upon the platform which eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Sister, 
and keep you in the rear. <laughs> uh, uh, rear of your affection out of the shot and danger of desire. I shall be affected to still bless and keep as watchman to my heart. I stayed too long, but uh, here, our butler comes. Yet here, Laertus, aboard, aboard. For shame, the wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There are my blessings with thee. And a few precepts for thy memory. Those friends thou hast in adoption tried, grapple them to your soul with hoops of steel. <laughs> Beware of it, just to quarrel, but being and bear that thy oppose, beware of thee. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Take every man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Neither a borrower nor lender be. <laughs> For loan off loses both itself and friend, but this above all else, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as night the day that thou cannot then be false to any man. Farewell. My blessing season this in thee. Uh, uh, most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. The time invites you. Go. Your servants tend. Farewell, Ophelia, and remember what I have said to you.
natural murder. Um, kind? No. <laughs> Madam? Murder? Uh, <laughs> murder most foul as in the best it is. The most foul, strange, and unnatural. But haste me to note that I with wings as swift as been taste with thoughts of love. May it sweep to my revenge. Uh, 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 Tis given up that sleeping in my orchard a uh, serpent stung me, so that the whole year of Denmark is by forced process of my death frankly abused. Uh, but now know, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sing thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my... <laughs> My uncle, A, oh, uh, I, <laughs> uh, that incestuous, that adulterous beast, with witchcraft of his whip, with traitorous gifts, won to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen, but soft, methinks I sent the morning, <laughs> brief let me be, sleeping in my orchard, my custom, sorry, uh, my custom, uh, of the afternoon, upon my secure hour, thy uncle's soul, with juice of cursed heaven on in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprioque de Telbent, the lesperous de Stelbent, the left, forget it, whose effect holds such enmity with the blood of man that swift as quicksilver, it courses through the natural gate and alleys of the body. And with a sudden vigor it doth pots it and curd, like eager dropping into milk, the thin and wholesome blood. <laughs> Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand, the life of crown of queen at once dispatched. Oh, horrible! Oh, horrible! Most horrible! If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch of luxury and damned incest. But, however thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother heart. Leave her to heaven, and to those foes that in her bosom thou to prick and sting her. Fare thee well. Adieu, adieu, Hamlet. Remember me. <laughs> Remember thee, I, poor ghost. While the memory holds the seat in this distracted globe, remember thee, yea, from the table of my memory I will wipe away all trivial fond records, and thy commandments alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain. <laughs> Unmixed with baser matters. Oh yes, by heaven, oh, mo oh most pernicious woman, oh villain, villain, smiling damned villain! I shall seek the king. This is the very 
opposed violent property or does itself and leaves the will to a desperate undertaking as oft as any passion under heaven doth afflict our natures. I'm sorry. Have you given him any hard words of late? No, my good lord. But as you just commanded, it requires a subject to find his access to me. That hath made him a man. I'm sorry for the better heed and judgment I did not for him. I feared that he did but tweak meant to wreck thee. Oh, be shoes, my jealousy. It is as proper for our age to cast our opinions beyond ourselves as it is common for the younger sort to lack discretion. Come, go with me to the king. This must be known, which being kept closed might be more grief to hide than hate to utter love. and Gildenstern. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? What it could be other than his father's death that has brought him so far from understanding of himself, I cannot dream of. I entreat you, I, I entreat you both that being of so young days, brought up with him, that you, that you might save your stay here, in our kingdom for so little time, and that, that, oh, and that you may gather, as you, <laughs> that you might gather so much from the occasion, as you might glean what unknown afflicts him thus that opened, uh, lies within our remedy. Good gentlemen, he hath much talk to you, and sure I am two men there are not living to whom he more adheres. To show us so much gentry and goodwill as to extend your time with us a while, full of the ply and profit of our hope. Your visitation shall receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. We both obey, and here give up ourselves in a full bed to lay our service freely at your feet. To be commanded, I beseech you instantly to visit my too much changed son. Heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to him. <laughs> My good leash, I do think that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, oh, speak of that, that I do long to hear. I doubt it is no other but the main, his father's death an hour or a hasty marriage. I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad call I it, but the prime true madness, what is it but to be nothing else but mad? More matter with less art. So, uh, Rachel, the cast is going out to Applebee's after the show. <laughs> Yeah, my whole family's coming too. I'd like you to meet them since we're now <laughs> uh, we're dating. Them. <laughs> but last I'm night sure the party <laughs> that mean anything to you? <laughs> How many other guys last night? <laughs> Wait, no, don't change the subject. <laughs> oh, shut <laughs> up! <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> madam. I swear I use. No art at all. That he is mad, tis true, tis true, tis a pity. Manless grant him then, but it so remains for us to find the cause of that madness. I have a daughter, hatched for well, she is mine, who in her duty and obedience hath given me this. So, gather and surmise. Came it from Hamlet to her. Stay a while, madam. I will. Be faithful. Two, this is my soul, and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. 
Hallelujah. Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar. But never doubt I love. Hamlet. Solicitings as they fell out by time, by place, by means, all given to my ear. But how had she received his love? To my young mistress, thus I did reply. Lord Hamlet is a prince, he is out of thy sphere, this must not be. And then I precepts gave her. I said, she should walk herself from his resort, accept no messengers, receive no tokens, and then he falls short tale to make fell into a sadness, and then a fast, then a watch, and then he find this declension into that madness wherein he now raves. Do you think tis this? It may be very likely. Has it been such a time I'd fain know when I positively said tis so, when it proved otherwise? Not that I know. But how may we try this further? You know, sometimes he walks for hours here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I will lose my daughter to him, be you and I behind an heiress then. Mark that encounter. And if you love her not, and if be not for his reason, fallen thereon, will make me no assistant to a state that keep a farm and carcass. We will try it. Oh, but look where sadly the poor wretch comes. Away, I beseech you both. Away, I will board him presently. How doth my good lord Hamlet? Well, God of mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent. Well, you are a fishmonger. Oh, well, not I, my lord. I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord. Aye, sir, for to be honest as this world goes is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. That is very true, my lord. If the sun breeds maggots and sheds dogs, being a god kissing carrion, have you another? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Her conception is a blessing, but not that your daughter may conceive. Friend, look to it. <laughs> I'll save you by that. Still harping on my daughter, yet he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger. He is far gone, far gone. Yet truly in my youth I did suffer much extremity for love. Very dear, this. I will speak to him again. What do you mean, my lord? Uh, words, words. Um, um. <laughs> words. <laughs> what is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean the matter that you mean, my lord. Well, slander, sir. <laughs> but as the terrible rogue says here, that old men have gray beards and their faces are wrinkled. Their eyes were stick with amber and plum tree gum and have a plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hands, all of which, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe you, but hold it not honestly to have it thus set down, that yourself, sir, should be old as I am, if, like a crab, you could go backward. <laughs> Sometimes his replies are, it's a happiness that madness often is on which reason and sanity could not be so prosperously delivered up. I will leave him and suddenly contrive the means of meeting between he and my daughter. My honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take anything from me that I will more willingly part with all. Accept my life, accept my life, accept my life. Fare you well, my lord. These tedious old fools.
hundred children of the earth. Happy in that we are not, or happy. On Origin's cap, we are not in the very bottom. Nor are the soles of her shoes. Neither, my lord. Will they be little about her waist, or in the middle of her favors? I <laughs> think her price, we hear. Oh, and the secret parts of fortune. Oh, most true, she is a strumpet. But tell me, what's the news? None, my lord, but that the world has grown honest. That is the case. <laughs> That is good today, Pierre, but your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord. Well, that marks a prison. That is the world one, a goodly one, in which there are many confines, wars, and dungeons, Denmark being one of the worst. We think not so, my lord. Why, that says none to you. For there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. Why, then, it's your ambition that makes it so. It's too narrow for your mind. Oh, God, I could be bound into the nutshell and cut myself a king of infinite <laughs> Space. <laughs> Were it not that I have bad dreams. But which dreams indeed are it? For the very substance of the ambitious is merely the shadow of a dream. A dream itself is but a shadow. Truly, I hold the ambition of so bright and airy a quality that it you shadow, shadow! Uh, <laughs> then are our beggars' bodies and monarchs and outstretched heroes the beggar shadows? The shadows of the court are by my bag. I cannot read them. Oh, 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 it is no such matter. I would not search you with the rest of my service, for to speak to you as an honest man, I am most dreadfully attended. But in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, my lord, no other occasion. Were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, deal justly with me. Come, come. Nay, speak. And say what, my lord? Why, anything but to the purpose. You were sent for, there's a kind of confession in your looks which your modesties have not cracked enough to color. I know that your king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me conjure you by the rights of our fellowship by the constancy of our youth, by the obligation of our ever-preserved love, and by what more dear or better proposer to charge you with all. Be even and direct with me whether you were sent for or no. What say you? Hey, my lord, we were sent for. And I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery and your secrecy for the king and queen most no better. I have of late, wherefore I, I know not when, but all my mercy. Forgotten all custom of exercises. And indeed, it goes so heavily with my dispositions, this goodly prey of the earth seems to me nothing more than a sterile promontory. <laughs> this most excellent canopy, the air, I look you. This brave, horn hanging permit, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire, appears to me nothing more than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man! <laughs> How no one is breathing. How infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how expressed and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The paragon of the animals, the beauty of the world, but yet, what is this quintessence of dust? For man delights not me, no, nor woman either. Though by your smiling you would seem to say so. My lord, there is no such stuff in my pots. <laughs> Gentlemen, you are welcome, Elsinore. You are welcome, good friends, but my uncle, father, and aunt's mother are deceived. In what, my lord? That I am but mad north northwest. Why, when the wind is southerly, I know a hop for my hands off. <laughs> Judge and gather as he has behaved whether or not 
Tis the affliction be love or no that he thus suffers for. I shall obey. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauty be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring him to his wonted way again. May I wish it may.
shall do well, but yet I think that the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. Oh no, Ophelia, you need not tell us what he said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please, but let his queen and mother all alone entreat him to show his suffering. Let her be round with him, and I'll be placed in the ear of the conference so please you. And if she finds it not to England, send him or confine him wherever your wisdom best shall think. Let it be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. Churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion into this world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake, but look on it. So stop now to my mother. O oh heart, lose not thy nature. Let not ever the soul of Nero into this firm bosom. Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. Though my tongue and soul in this be hypocrites, how in my words soever she be shent, to give them seals never my soul consent.
place is rank. It smells to heaven. It bears the eldest primal curse upon it, a brother's murder. What if this cursed hand were thick as itself with blood? Is there rain, in, it, is there rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it clean as snow? Oh, oh, what prayer will serve my turn? Forgive my wretched murder, but this cannot be. I still possess the effects for which I committed that murder. My, my, my crown, my own ambition, my queen. Oh, can one be pardoned and still retain the offense? Oh, oh, wretched state. Oh, bosom black as death. Oh, oh, wretched soul. Striving to be clear and yet, and yet held more tightly. Oh, oh hell, angels make us say, what? Oh, oh, stubborn knees bow, all might be well. Now he is praying and so he goes to heaven. Am I then revenged? <coughs> Take him in the perjuring of his soul when he is seated and fit for passage. No. Up sword, and know thou the more horrid hands when he is drunk asleep or in his rage or the incestuous pleasures of his bed as gaming, swearing, or some other act that has no relish of salvation in it, then trip him that his heels may kick at heaven, that his soul may be as damned as black as hell, where to it goes. Himself, in Isle Mars to threaten and command. 
as a new station like the Herald Mercury, a new light on a heaven-kissing hill, a combination and a form indeed with which every god did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. And look, you now what follows. Here is your husband, like a mildewed ear blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and batten on this moor? Who oh, has it? Speak no more these words like daggers entering my ears. No more, sweet Hamlet. A murderer and a villain. No more. A king of shreds and patches. Say when you hover over me with your wings and touch me hard. What would your gracious figure? Do not forget, this visitation is but to quench thy almost blunted purpose. Look, amazement upon thy mother's sick. So <laughs> Step between her and her fighting soul. Speak to her, Helen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, how is it with you? Um, how, um, how, how, um, Lady. What? Lady. The line is, how is it with you, lady? How is it with you, lady? <laughs> how is it with you that you do fit your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air to hold discourse? Where ought you look? On him, on him. Well, look how pale he glares. Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all. Yet all that is, I see. Nor did you nothing hear. Nothing but ourselves. Well, look you now how it steals away. My father in his habit as he lived. Look now where he goes. Even now out at the portal. <laughs> this is the very coinage of your brain. This bottomless creation ecstasy is very cunning in. Ecstasy? <laughs> My pulse as yours doth temperately keep time and make us helpful music. This is not madness that I have uttered. But bring me to test, and I this matter will reword which madness would gamble from. Mother, for love of grace, lay not that flattering unction to your soul, that not your trespass, for my madness speaks. It will but skin and film the ulcerous place, while strength corruption mining all within infects unseen. Confess yourself to heaven, repent of what's past, avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Oh, heaven! Go ahead and club my heart in twain. Well, then throw away the worser part of it and lift the purer with the other half. Assume a virtue. Go not to my uncle's bed. Refrain tonight. And that will lend a kind of easiness to the next abstinence, the next more easy. For youth almost can change the stamp of nature and either curb the devil or throw him out with wondrous potency. For this same Lord, <laughs> I do repent. Heaven hath pleased to punish me with this and this with me, that I must be their scourge and minister. Wait! What? Uh, good son Hamlet, do not you wish to have one word more? Right. Um. One word more, good lady. Let not the Vulcan tempt you again to his bed, pinch wanton on your cheeks, call you with his mouth, or let him for a pair of breechy kisses, or paddle in your neck with his damned fingers, make you to rattle all this matter out, that I essentially am not in madness, but mad in craft. For good to let him know, for who that's but a queen sober, fair, and wise, would from a paddock, from a back, and give such dear concerning eyes? Who would do so? No. In despite of your sense and secrecy, unpeg the basket from the house's top, and let the birds fly and like the famous ape to try conclusions in the basket creep and break their own neck down.
your nerves and the right to set or bear your offices. The realm calling you Lord. They cry, choose me, let it shall be king. Caps, hands, and tongues of glory to the clouds. Let it shall be king, let it be king. <laughs> the door is broke. <laughs> O oh, thou vile king, give me my father, calmly who Laertes. <laughs> that drop of blood that's calm reclaims me, bastard, cries cuckold to my father, brands a harlot even here between the chaste, unsmirched brow of my true mother. What is the cause, Laertes, that your, your rebellion looks so giant-like? Where is my father? Dead. Dead. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. To hell, allegiance vows to the blackest devil. Only I'll do it. Returned. 
We will bring you fine together and wager on your heads, and he being remiss and most generous and free of all contriving will not think to peruse the foils, and thus with ease or with a little shuffling you might choose a sword unbated, and in passing practice requite him for your father. I'll do it, and for that purpose I'll, and for that purpose I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction out of mountebank so rare, but dip a knife in it. No cataplasm under the moon can save the thing from death. This is but scratch with all. I'll dip my knife in this contagion, that, if gall him slightly, it may be death. Ah, and thus, when in your motion you become hot and dry, and make your bugs more violent to that end, he shall ask for a drink, and I shall have a chalice prepared for the nonce. And he but sipping, should he escape your venom stuff, our purpose may still hold there. Ah, how now, sweet queen? What woe doth tread upon another's heel? So fast they follow. <laughs> <laughs> your sister's drowned, Laertes. Uh, uh, drowned? Oh, where? <laughs> there is a willow from the slender brook that shows us all leaves in the glassy stream. There, with fantastic garlands did she come, of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples that <laughs> liberal shepherds give a grosser name, but our cold maids do dead men's fingers call them. There, on the pendant bough, were cornet weeds, clamoring to hang, an envious swim of rooks, when down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide in mermaid like, a while they bore her up, which time she chanted snatches of old tunes, as one incapable of her own distress, or oh, like a creature, native and endued into that element. What long it could not be to let her garments, heavy with their drinks, pull the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. Then she is drowned. Drowned! Drowned! Uh, too much water hath poor Ophelia, and for that purpose I forbid my tears. I have a speech of fire that may help. I had a speech of fire that fate would blaze, but this folly doubts it. No. Oh, let us follow, sweet queen, how much I had to do to calm his rage, and now I fear it will begin again. Therefore, let us follow. Sarah? Uh, 
advisor for a pinch of clay or to be made for such a guest is me. Without <laughs> indeed, for thou liest in it. Well, that don't buy style comics, and therefore it's not yours, but <laughs> for my part, boy. Well, I do not buy it, and yet it is mine. <laughs> It needed to be thine, to be and to say to thine. Uh, Tis for the dead, not the quick, therefore thou liest. <laughs> to is a quick lie, sir, to the way game for me and you. <laughs> <laughs> what man dost thou dig it for? Uh, for no man, sir. Well, what woman then? Uh, for none, neither. <laughs> Who's to be buried in it? Uh, 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 for one that, that was a woman, sir, but rest his soul. She's dead. <laughs> How absolute the name is. We must speak by the card or equivocation will endure us. How long hast thou been a great beggar? Of all the days I the year, I came to it that same day that our last King Hamlet overcame Fort Cross. And how long is that since? Can't you even tell that? <laughs> Any fool knows that. <laughs> it is the same day that our young Hamlet was born. Hey, that is mad. How came he mad? Well, very strangely, they say. How strangely? But in faith that you were losing his wits. <laughs> Upon what ground? Why, do you in Denmark? Oh, I've been sexting here. <laughs> Man and boy. Thirty years. Now, how long will a man lie on the earth ere he rocks? <laughs> in faith, if he not be robbed before he die. <laughs> we have many a fucking corpses nowadays. <laughs> now, that'll scare us all the way in. Now, now he'll <laughs> last you. Eight year, nine year. Now, if he's a ten, he'll ask you nine year. Why he more than another? Why well, his heart is so ten with his trade. They, they keep the water on a great while. Now your water's a sore decayer for your horse and dead body. <laughs> now, now here's a skull here now. Now this skull has laid on the earth for, for three and twenty years. Well, whose was it? <laughs> A horse and man fellow he was. <laughs> Why, who do you think he was? Nay, I, I know not. <laughs> a pestilence on his head for a man to apply. He once he was poured a flag and a radish on me and the same skull. This, uh... What is that? <laughs> uh, this same skull, sir, is your ring skull. The king's jester. This, he now. Let me see. Alas, poor Eurick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite, um, of infinite, um, jest. <laughs> of some excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And how bored in my imagination it is. My gorge runs at it. Here hung those lips. I kiss I know not how oft. But what be your gambols now, your guides, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar? Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chat fallen. Now, get you to my lady's chambers and tell her, let her paint an inch thick, that of this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. <laughs> Pretty her age, you'll tell me one thing. Dost thou think Alexander looked up this fashion of the earth? In some. But it's not so. <laughs> In some, my lord. To what base uses we may return, Horatio? But stop. But stop, here comes the king.
Pharisee. Her death was doubtful, and but for that great command which was swayed the order, she should, in ground unsanctified and watched until the last trumpets. Her charitable prayer, shards, flint, pebbles should have been thrown on her, and yet she has allowed her virgin right her maiden instruments in the bringing home of bell to burial. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the services and the dead to sing requiem and offer such rest to her as the peace pardoned soul. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violet spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel will my sister be when thou liest howling. What? The fair Ophelia? Sweet to the sweet farewell. I hope thou shouldst have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride meant to have taken sweet pain and not have strewed thy grave. Oh, treble woe! Fall <laughs> ten times treble upon that person head whose ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while, till I have held her in my arms once more. Oh. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Uh, um, uh, I'll pile the dust upon the quick in the den, till a flat mountain you have made to overtop the sky shed of Opalion or blue Olympus. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? Whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder wounded heroes? This is I, Hamlet the Dane! The devil take thy soul! Ha! 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thou prayest not well. I pray thee to take thy fingers from my throat. Take thy fingers from my throat. Oh, God! Ah! 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 Wilt weep, wilt fast, wilt fight, wilt drink up easel, eat a crocodile? I'll do it. Thou shalt come here to wine, or else face me by living in her grave. Be very quick with her, and so will I. This is mere madness. And thus a foil who fit will work on him, and on his chintel as the female dove, with that of golden compass on his cloak. His silence will sit drooping. Hear you, sir. What is the reason you use me thus? I love you better, but it is no matter. Let Hercules do what he may. The cat will mew and dog will have its day.
sir. <laughs> now, Nuri comes to court is nervous. Are you sure you're an absolute gentleman? One of the most excellent differences of a very soft society. Great showing. He's both the carded calendar of gentry. <laughs> well, you shall find him in the parts of the continent in which, in which a gentleman would see. And what imports the nomination of this gentleman? Of Lentis? Of him, sir. <laughs> I'm sure you're not ignorant. <laughs> I would you did. In fact, if you did, I did not much approve of it. Well, sir, but you are not ignorant of what excellence Lentis is. I dare confess that shall I compare with him in excellence, but to know a man well were to know himself. But his weapons and the, the imputation laid upon him by their wife in his need, he is, he is a fellow. And what is his weapon? Oh, Rapier <laughs> and dagger. <laughs> That's two of his weapons, but, well, <clears throat> yes, we His majesty has laid against him six Barbary horses against which he has imposed, as I take it, six French rapiers with their signs and hangers and girdles and so. Uh, and the king has said that if any of a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed him three hits. The king has laid twelve for nine, and the matter shall come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe your answer. And uh, how if I answer no? My lord, this is the imposition of your person in trial. Sir, I will walk these halls and please his majesty. Just the breathing kind of day with me. Let him bring the foils, the gentleman willing. The king holds his purpose. I shall win for him, and I can. If not, I shall gain nothing but my shame and the odd hits. Shall I relive you in so? To this effect, sir, with whatever flurry to your nature will. I commend my duty. To your lordship. Yours, yours. <laughs> you will lose this wager, my lord. Why do I think so? Since he has gone to France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. Thou wouldst think ill while it's here about my heart, but it is no matter. If your mind is like anything, obey it. I will first call the repair hither and say you're not fit. Now what? We defy augury, for there's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. Table. And which the king. 
king drinks to you. Let us begin and judge. Bear a wary eye. Come, sir. Come, my lord. Draw thy breath in pain, 
to tell my story. Thou cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee till I rest. 